Hello students, welcome to BTEC 360. Today we are going to discuss about IIT Madras. At BTEC 360, we are going to cover every IIT, every NIT, every triple IIT and every single good engineering college in this country in terms of their how you need to get in, what are the kind of fees that you need to pay, what are the kind of placement that you have and the kind of median salary, possibly at a branch level also we will be able to discuss that. So for you, if you are really interested in getting into any of the good BTEC colleges in this country, please subscribe to BTEC 360 because it will keep you informed on everything that's going on out here. Today we're going to discuss IIT Madras as I told you and we'll talk of the branch-wise cutoffs that you need in terms of the JE advanced rank, the kind of placement that you will have, the kind of mid and salary and the top recruiters that IIT Madras has and the kind of offering that you have completely, right? Also, you know, there's a link in the description. We created a comprehensive guide on all the IITs including the kind of cutoffs that you need, the kind of scores that you need, the kind of placements that happen and the kind of branch-wise placement that you happen and that will happen. So if you want to download this ebook you know go to the link below click on it register and then ask for that uh, ebook and it will come to you by mail or by message uh, by on whatsapp so just download it if you want every single information about IIT it's a very comprehensive guidebook that we created only for you students now what is IIT Madras IIT Madras the uh, you know it was established in 1959 right it was established in 1959 so it's got a fantastic year of 75 years kind of a legacy that you have and it's an institution of national importance, 650 acres of land. So one of the most beautiful campus that you will see out there. The number one engineering college in the country based on the Government of India ranking, which is an IRF ranking. Though I must tell you that in terms of cutoffs, if you were to look at the preference of students based on the kind of, you know, JE advanced cutoffs that are moving in, then typically IIT Bombay seems to be getting the better students as compared to IIT Madras. But having said that, the Government of India ranking says number one engineering college will stick there at this point in time. The total number of students is 3,589, of which 79% are boys, 21% are girls, and about 3,000 students come from outside the state of Tamil Nadu, right? And that's a good number uh, in a certain sense, in, in every single respect, right? Now, what is the kind of placement? We're talking of placements, and then we'll also talk of cutoffs as I move along. In, the, in terms of the placement, in 23-24, for which we have data, and we also have data for 24-25 and 25-26, we'll talk about it as we move along, hopefully, right? Uh, because this is what we're trying to present to you is the data that's given to the government of India and that you know there is a bit of a lag which is what we're discussing this. The 24-25 and all we actually have for the uh, from, from the institution brochure so we just are slightly more careful about presenting those kind of numbers because we want to stick with what's been filed by you know, an affidavit to the government of India right. There we, when we see the numbers 959 students joined the undergrad program of which 7, 714 students graduated right. Uh, 549 students were placed, 153 were moved to higher education, right? 97.86% uh, is the uh, you know placement rate. This is 714 minus 153 is whatever it is. So 549 were placed, so 98% is the placement rate, and the median salary is 17.5 lakh. So that's the number that you're dealing with, which is very, very good in that sense. And the same thing, if you see earlier also, the admitted was 806, a graduate 639, place 496, 96 moved for higher education. Typically in an undergrad program, you actually have a lot more students moving for the post-graduation program also, which is where you actually see that number of opt opting for higher studies is uh, very uh, good. And the again, 91, 92% kind of a placement at 16.63. So year on year, if you see, there's been a growth in, in terms of the kind of placement percentage that they have of those students who registered for placement and were placed. That's very important for you to understand. Because students who move for higher education don't get, obviously they're not looking for placement, they're looking for higher education. But, and then at a median salary level, so you actually see a growth. Both are a growth at this point in time, right? Now this is the overall data. Now how does a at a branch level how how does this, this data look at? At a branch level, of course we don't have the placement percentages, uh, but overall when we see this whole thing, when you look at 98%, it obviously means that most of the students were placed, isn't it? The median salary for computer science was 46 lakh rupees. Average salary was 53.2 lakh rupees. For electrical, the median was 22.5. Average was 28.8. Right. For physics, the median salary was 18 lakhs. The average salary was 34 lakhs. This I suspect actually there is a problem out here as I see it because it can't be so variant, but it's happened here in this particular case. Uh, we, so I would still be suspect about this particular data point. I'll also check and get back to you on this. Right. Uh, this is about physics. Right. Chemical engineering, the median salary is 17.4 uh, lakhs. And, uh, you know, 
average salary is 18.8 lakh civil engineering 17.2 lakhs and 17.5 lakh now this particular thing actually uh, you know uh, is slightly variant but otherwise if you see the median salary the average salary is slightly more than the median salary which is what it is typically is you know between 5 to 20 percent is what the growth that you see so essentially you actually have computer science getting the best salary possible and obviously that's what the, is the case and civil getting almost about uh, you know 40 percent of what uh, you would be if you're a computer science graduate now the choice that you need to make as I keep moving along is that when I come with the other college you'll realize that that there might be a case for you to say that if you're a great good rank because even at civil engineering you if you see the cutoff that you see of J advanced ranks then there is a great possibility that you can actually get into one of the CS subjects in one of the lesser known IITs and get better salary than 17.2 lakh is what you will be evaluating at some point in time right now when you look at the cutoff right and this is very important for you to understand what is the kind of cutoff that you have this is category wise cutoff so remember it is category general category cutoff ews is ews category rank is what you're talking we're always talking of category rank here and not a a similar rank across the board right so when you look at the category rank for btech computer science and engineering 171 is the cutoff that you uh, this is the last rank for which someone got an admission into that for artificial intelligence and data analytics 306 for electrical engineering it was 849 for computational engineering and mechanics, it's 13309. And for engineering physics, it's 1441. Right. In the EWS category, it's 29th rank, 65th, 198, 293, and 586. Right. Now, OBC NCL, the category rank was 87 for beta computer sciences. Artificial AI was 165. Electrical was 396. Computational engineering and mechanics was 741. And engineering physics was 1011. For SC, it was 43 rank and ST was 28th uh, rank. Again, I'm saying these are all category ranks. Remember this, these are all category ranks. So remember this, this is all we're talking about category ranks and not the generic rank that comes out, right? So this data, you can actually look at the whole thing and then you'll understand the kind of competition that you have computer science, which means the best of the best is likely to go in any which way, right? Now, moving further, for mechanical, it's 2468 for general. general. Uh, for uh, aerospace, 2808. Aerospace engineering, 3211. And by the way, there is a dual degree program. BTEC and MTEC, aerospace engineering, dual degree, right? And um, MTEC engineering, uh, this again, another dual degree program. And BTEC chemical is 4116. So the kind of cutoff, uh, closing cutoff rank that you need to have to get into any of this is what I am showing you and similarly for you know at a category wise also you can see that you can download that you can use that uh, or take a screenshot of, uh, of this to understand what are your chances of getting into these kind of things right now going further for the other branches now I told you earlier that remember civil engineering was 61112 now at 6112 maybe it's possible for you to get into the seventh or eighth best engineering IIT maybe at CS level also or 10th best IIT so the choice that you will have to make is whether you will be able to study in civil engineering in IIT Madras where you get 17 lakh rupees or get into another IIT where at 6112 you will get AI or data sciences or uh, computer sciences and those kind of things where the salary is likely to be 25-30 lakh rupees and the placement percentage also is very high out there. Remember that as you keep going down the order in terms of IITs you will actually get some of the core uh, you know the some of the branches get 100% placement but you move down the core branches are struggling at this point in time so that is an option that you will be able to deal with right but at this point in time this is what it is looking like instrumentation biomedical 4366 biological engineering 5261 metallurgical 5499 civil 61112 and naval architecture 71433 remember IIT Madras being closer to the port and all they will always keep uh, keep working on what is in the interest of the nation in terms of the kind of programs that they start which is where this naval architecture and ocean engineering and all were added because I think as a country we need some of this these kind of engineers and that's why these uh, were added you can also see the category cutoffs here so that you are very very clear of where you stand and what are your chances of getting into IIT Madras for the kind of branches that you have out there. Now, what are the companies that come in? You actually have the best of the companies coming in, the trillion dollar companies, which is Google, Microsoft, Intel, Samsung, Nvidia, Qualcomm, Cisco, Amazon, Flipkart, Honeywell. So you can again notice that you actually have software companies, tech companies, banks, Citibank, American Express, Deutsche Bank, MasterCard, Standard Chartered and all. Then consulting company, which is McKinsey and Company, Bain and Company, Deloitte, EY. Then you also have ISRO coming in at IIT Madras and recruiting because you also have aerospace engineering, you have naval architecture. So you actually have quite a few which are suited for a 
an ISRO kind of a thing. So you will actually see that, right? Boeing, Airbus. So quite a few companies are coming in. Depending on the kind of branch that you take, possibly you will be able to, you know, get placed in one of these companies. When we also examined the LinkedIn profile of students who studied at IIT Madras at some point in time. In all, and this, by the way, this alumni account would also, because it's been there for the last 65, 70 years, you will actually see a lot more people uh, of IIT Madras sitting here uh, on the on the platform. So we exa actually examined 1,6,000 students who claimed that they were st studied at IIT Madras in different capacities. It can be UG, PG, or maybe some of them might have also done online, but still it's a broader sense it gives you in terms of the kind of work that people work, you know, the companies that people work at based on the study that they pursued at IIT Madras. When we looked at that data, in Microsoft, currently 488 students are working. At some point in time, 1,827 students worked. So obviously they would have worked here, got placed there and then from there on moved to other companies. But currently 488 students who studied at IIT Madras are right now working at Microsoft. In Deloitte, 259 students are working. EY, 154 people are working. Qualcomm, 677 people are working, right? And this is the number at where we're talking of at some point in time they've worked at these companies, but currently so many are working who claim that they studied at IIT Madras. But Moving further, you know, the Mang company, which is the trillion dollar company is something that people keep talking about because these people make big offers and the growth story price possibly is better out here. So when we looked at that data, in Meta, 140 students are currently working, Apple 242 are working, Amazon 505 are working, Netflix 9 students are working and Google 524 st students are working. So obviously, uh, very clearly these companies, you know, you could have seen that, uh, you know, the list of companies that are coming for, uh, you know, placement, you see all these names and that is the reason why so many people are working there. And obviously the placement happened there, some people stuck around and some people moved around and then came back to this company. All those things will happen, but so many students are, are currently working in these mom companies, which are the best companies out there in terms of the kind of paybacks that they give, right? Now, we, when we f further went down to understand where do the students who studied at IIT Madras, how are they placed and where are they staying and all, because it gives you some kind of a global mobility index or the mo mobility of the, of the student across the country and maybe across the globe also. So when we looked at that, 81% of the students who studied at IIT Madras are right now in India, which means 19% are outside of India. Right. So these are all global citizens, right? In the sense that they joined one of these companies and moved up in within the ranks within that company also, or possibly they moved out of that company and uh, took up a global role in a out, in a country outside of India, right? Of this, of this 19%, 12% students are right now in United States of America, which obviously means that these students are performing very, very well, that they moved on and then maybe a Silicon Valley or whatever it is, but they have moved on outside of India and are right 12% of the students, alumni of IIT Madras are right now in US, 12,000 that's a very good number. In UK, you have 1,312 students. In Germany, 1,112. In UAE, 1,047. Canada, 860. Singapore, 654. And Australia, 595. So obviously, this is the 19% we're talking about. Right. So that is a very good number when you look at this whole thing. And besides that, of course, Tamil Nadu, you know, IIT Madras being based out of Tamil Nadu, 21% are working in Tamil Nadu, 80, of which 18% are in Chennai only. Right. And Karnataka, 13%, of which 12% are in Bangalore only. So you very clearly see some kind of a thing, Hyderabad being the third best thing with 5% uh, students. So very clearly, the students who studied at IIT Madras are all over the country and all over the globe also, about 19% are outside the uh, country also, which means that the, the kind of learning that happens at IIT Madras, there is nothing that I need to say. All of you know about it, that they're doing ex performing extremely well and growing up in, in their career and also taking up global roles, which is what it is, right? So this is what IIT Madras is all about. If you want me to cover any other uh, institution, please write to me on the message box. I'll be happy to cover that. I've given you all the cutoff. I've given you the placement. I've given you the companies that are coming for placement. I've given you the uh, the kind of role, uh, the kind of uh, uh, you know salaries that they they are offering. So you have everything. If you want me to cover anything else, as I said, please write to me. I'll be more than happy to cover that. And at BTEC 360, we're going to cover every single IIT, every single IIIT, every single NIT, and every single good engineering college in the country, so that you have a better view of what you must do to get into that college, and what are the chances, what are the prospects, right? Thank you so much. Namaste.